Hello everybody, thank you for joining me today. My name is David, I'm a life coach and I help people heal, grow and recover from all kinds of different traumas. Uh, this is my question and answer video I do every single week, every Monday. And I'm answering people's questions from last Monday. And please, everybody, and new subscribers and new people, hello, welcome. Please go down below into the comments section and ask me questions. That's the best way to heal, is to understand and learn what happened to you. Okay, so please ask me anything and I'll answer it next week in the next Q&A video. All I ask, please, all of you, give us your locations. Tell us where you are somewhere. Just be general, okay? Um, every week I, or every other week, somewhere like that, I like to rec recommend that you do something and ask that actually, ask that you do something. And that is support something called Shane's Law Petition. Shane was a, a man who was a victim of a smear campaign, narcissistic smear campaign, for a very long time, and it, it just took him over, and he couldn't find any help, didn't know what to do, and he committed suicide. He took his own life, something that people with PTSD are doing every single day because they can't find the help they need. And Shane did it because of a smear campaign. And someone uh, he knows started a petition in his name to fight and combat this kind of uh, social attacks. If you could please go down into the description box, you'll see something that says Shane's Law Petition. Just follow it and click the box, okay? Support it, please. If you don't like social shaming and public targeting and assassination, character assassinations and, and smear campaigns, then please support this. This is just some small attempt to try to stop this and, and steer society in a better direction. Thank you. I also like to make suggestions every week for, for you guys to do something that I think will help in your growth. Uh, with the quarantine being almost over, for most of us, you know, whether it already is or it's going to be in the next two weeks, month, um, I want to just kind of bring it out there to plan. Can you guys plan something? Right? Some of you may uh, need a new job. Some of you may want a new job after this. Some of you, and I, and I really think that all of you guys should consider some type of vacation, right? Get away from your home, get out of your, your town, something like that. Uh, maybe if you don't want to fly, maybe we can drive somewhere and go camping. It's that time of year, right? Cheap, if that's all you can afford. Uh, don't eat your, your food in your home, go eat it in a tent in the woods. Um, maybe, you know, uh, what else do I have here? How about new commitments and interest? I hope that this, well, I know this has changed your life somehow in some way, but maybe you're, you're realizing some things that you, you're committed to things that you don't want to be committed to <clears throat> or committed to too many things. <clears throat> so maybe some new commitments and how about some new interest in life? Find out some new things that interest you in life and let's start making life more interesting, okay? Maybe start exercising. Maybe go back to exercising now. Start planning this stuff. Find out where you're going to and, and leave money if you want to uh, join a gym or something. Let's pick up some new hobbies. Uh, maybe you want to start meditating, maybe classes or courses you want to start thinking about taking. Let's start thinking about this stuff, yeah? Uh, spring cleaning, let's get rid of things in our house. Let's purge. It's an awesome time to purge. Purge, you know, maybe evaluate your relationships and maybe purge some people you don't want in your life that don't support you. Maybe purge some belongings and things that you don't really need or use. Maybe some clothes that you don't really wear anymore. Yeah, clean some stuff out and purge. It feels amazing, especially at times like this. But like I said before, evaluate relationships. Maybe that's something that will really help you right now. Start realizing that, you know, well, maybe being stuck with some people during this time, you realize this isn't healthy. Maybe not seeing some people for a long time, you realize that they're very important to you. Okay. I just want to just, oh, and no dating sites. No dating sites. Don't rush out and think you need to start dating now. Oh. <laughs> um, I just wanted to bring this to your attention, right? Uh, it, 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 life is going to go back to somewhat normal here soon for everyone worldwide. So start planning it. Be ready, right? We're all getting out at the same time almost. So, you know, you want to be ahead of the crowd. Um, something to look forward to. Get us through the last bit of time that you're quarantined for. The next couple weeks, month, however long it is for you, okay? Start planning. Know what you want. Something to look forward to. 
Time goes by faster. Uh, so let's get started with the questions, shall we? First one is from Anna in Syracuse, New York. Hello, Anna. I loved the rendition going through life all the have-tos. By the time you got to buying the house, I was exhausted. <laughs> uh, she's talking about midlife crisis. Us. Most of us, if not all of us, have been taught that what matters is what we do. Performance. Um, that we have to attain things, that we have to go to school and college and get a degree and, and, our, and that our careers are what matters and starting our own families and getting married and having children, that all this is what really matters, not how we feel, not what we want. And by the time we achieve all these things, life sucks. I'm not happy. I don't know how to be. So Anna asks, after going through abuse by a narcissist, discovering what and why it happened, how do you really know that you are healed? Over it. Done. Finish. Um, I just answered this, I think, last week. So, some of the ways you can tell, right, is it doesn't hurt. No more emotional triggers. I don't mind talking about it or bringing it up. It doesn't bring up any raw emotions. It's okay. Um, I'm not angry at the person. I'm not resentful at the person anymore. Um, I generally hope they're okay, but I don't look or check on them anymore. I don't want to know anything about them anymore. Um, I understand everything that happened, and I understand why it happened, and I understand why it was necessary, and I understand it enough that I can even maybe explain it to someone else. Remember when it first happened? When you first learned all this, and you didn't really know what was happening maybe, and you tried to explain it, and people were like, what the hell are you talking about? You know, and they're like, people, no one, no one understands me. No one gets it. Well, when you can explain it better, which means when you're fully healed and understand it better, then you can explain it better. Yeah. Um, you know what you're missing in childhood and why it happened. And then you also know how to give it to yourself. And you know how to explain that to people. Um, you meet your emotional needs. You have boundaries and it feels good to have them. Um, you've got successful relationships now, you feel more stable, you know exactly who you are and you show it to people, you express it. There's some, yeah. Thanks, Anna. I'm Joseph from Texas. Hello, Joseph. How do I regain my reputation after the borderline smear campaign? Many people were swayed by her lies and won't even speak to me anymore. Some joined in her campaign. Well, first of all, I just got to say, if these are lies, if these are things you didn't do, then she doesn't have proof that you did them. And if people had no problem judging people at all, screw them. And if people have no problem ruining people's lives without proof, screw them. Not that you should ruin people's lives anyways. So it's real contradicting, Joseph, if you can really look at it from the standpoint of good and bad, right? That's what we're saying here. You're saying I'm good. They're saying you're bad. She's saying she's good. And they're all like, yep, she's good. You're bad. Who's good? Who's bad? Who's good? Who's bad? If you're bad, Joseph, right? And they're good. Then why are we saying bad things about people and attacking them and ruining their, their just reputation, just saying bad things about people? Isn't that bad? Isn't gossip gross and ugly? That's what a smear campaign is on the lightest note. Gossip, isn't that gross? So instead of good or bad, let's go sick and healthy, right? And sick is talking bad about people. And also sick is listening to it and liking it and gravitating towards it. We don't want sick people in our lives, right, Joseph? You want to be healthy and it's time to make a change and start surrounding yourself with healthier people. These are people doing you a favor. You don't have to get rid of them. Because anybody, I don't care who it is, anybody that does this, so-and-so is such a bad person, get away from me. Anybody that likes it, get away from me. There's two different kinds of people, Joseph, and we don't need to be friends with the whole world, do we? It's okay to even have enemies, I think. So let people, let some people talk bad and let other people like it. And we just separate ourselves. It's a great way to know who's sick and who's toxic, right? The sick person also would be you who defends yourself and argues with them. Why? If Joseph knows who Joseph is, 
then nobody else can tell them otherwise. If somebody doesn't agree with who you are, they don't know you. Because you decide who you are, Joseph. Nobody else. Nobody. Nobody decides who you are. So if somebody has a different opinion of who you are, well, guess who knows you best? You. So if they have a different opinion, just means they don't know you. Opinions are like assholes. They all, everybody has one and they all stink. And people love, love to tell their opinion. People should at least wait for someone to ask what their opinion is. Don't ask. Joseph, stop asking what people's opinion are you, uh, of them, or of you are. Okay? I know this is horrible. I know. Been there. I've had this. I don't, I'm not saying I, I, I know your pain like I've, I felt the same way you did and, and it was all exactly the same. But at some point, Joseph, you have to realize that some people in the world aren't going to like you. Period. And there's nothing you can do about it. Okay? We don't have to regain reputation. Reputation takes time. And if someone can tar it and tarnish it over a word, over what somebody says, screw them. Okay? Good luck, Joseph. Best way to deal with this? Not look at it, right? Know that it know that world, know that ugliness exists in the world, but it's not in my life. Two thousand babies are dying in pain at all times. At all times, two thousand roughly are dying in massive pain. It's sad. I can't do anything about it. It's ugly, but I also can't be a part of it. I can't have it in my life. I can't believe that some people are helping take care of those babies. That's amazing. I can't. Can't do it. I suggest you don't be a part of that or see that anymore either. But, but no one's healthy that believes that stuff or likes it or gravitates towards it or continues it or supports it. Uh, just sick. Just sick behavior. And you may not realize that. You may have grown up in a sick family and you dated sick people and your friends aren't very healthy. And so we start playing that game that everybody's going to think this. <clears throat> people are usually, most people are worried about themselves, which they should be. Uh, Anna from Paris. Hello, Anna. Is it true that we cannot survive without ego among people with egos? Yeah, kind of need it. Do we really need ego? need ego? Yes. If yes, to which point we have to develop it? You don't have to do anything. And anyway, can we control this process of ego developing? Yes, it's up to you. I think of ego as a form of self-expression. It's expressing yourself, right? It's not really truly who you are, but it's expressing who you are. It's expressing your self-importance in the world. Where narcissists are ego-driven and they think they're more important, right? Uh, I just had a narcissist a couple weeks ago sit there and tell me how great she is at her job. I'm so great at my job. I'm so important at my job. Everybody loves me. Everyone says I'm the best at it. Everyone says, you know, I'm going to get a promotion and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And it's just, uh-huh, man, you are sure important. That's an inflated ego. It's okay to have a big ego. You, but you're expressing to the world how important you are. It's better than no ego. I'm not important right? You are important. People are important. And if you're going to be, like you said, that's a great way of saying, if you're going to be in a world of egos, uh, you better have one or you're not significant. Um, look at people who claim they don't have egos, right? The Tibetan monks, where are they? Up on the mountains. They better be. You aren't going to survive here without egos. If you don't think you're significant or important. Ego starts where our skin stops. It's the outside of us. It's not truly us. It's an expression of us, ourselves. Keep asking questions. Thank you. That's a good one. I like those. Uh, Marie or Mary from Glasgow, Scotland. Hello, Scotland. My twin sister's nine-year-old child... Your, your twin no, your twin sister has a nine-year-old child who is oversensitive and temperamental. She is showing early signs of borderline personality disorder. She says she hates her life and thinks no one likes her. Sad at nine years old. My sister is fragile and has signs of borderline personality disorder as well. She does too. She often shouts and smacks her. My niece has a bad relationship with her father and stepmom who are mean to her and favor their new baby. How can I get my sister to be a better mom?
you, you can't control people, okay? Motivating somebody to do something they want to is different. Controlling somebody to do something they don't want to do, totally different. Is she asking to be a great mother? Is she looking everywhere to be a great mother, trying really hard? No, probably not. She puts her hands on her children, call the police. That's one way. Another thing I recommend, not being around it. And address it. Tell her, you're an abusive, horrible, neglectful mother. I'm not going to be a part of it. I'm not going to be around it. It's an awful situation. And, and there's not always a perfect answer for problems like this. You know what I mean? It's sad. Nine-year-olds being traumatized, abused. She's about to start forming her personality and it might be disordered. She's nine years old. She definitely has the ability to change. But there's, it's sad to say, there's not much you can do. And, and, and as far as any kind of state offered um, organizations, divisions, things like this that help, they don't do much, especially with personality disorders. The, the hitting, yeah, but you have no control. You do what you can and then you realize that that's all you can do and then you don't be subjected to it. Can't be around it. Nobody's impervious to abuse, being around it, seeing it, done to someone else even. I really don't know what else to say besides that. Um, because she she's not trying to get help either. She's not looking for answers. She doesn't want to be a, be a better mom and you're just saying, hey, I got to... You know, my sister's trying to be a better mom. Do you have anything I can tell her? No. My, my sister's abusing her child, and uh, I don't want her to. I don't know what else to tell you. You're allowed to stop it when you see it, whatever it takes, by law. <clears throat> then it starts getting pretty scary, pretty ugly for you. Because you can stop it once, twice, three times. How many times can you stop it before you go to jail? I'm sorry I can't help you more with that. Recommendation is don't be around it much at all, maybe. Uh, hi, David. Happy to be here. I'm from Wisconsin. And this is Julie. Hello, Julie. New to your channel. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, my question is, what is your opinion on stonewalling? Been through so much in the last three years. I have so much to ask and contribute from my situation. Thank you and love listening to you. You are awesome. Thank you, Julie. You have so much to contribute and share. Do it. Don't just do it here. Hire someone so that it's so that it, it it's beneficial for you. It's really, really helping you do something, okay? That's my recommendation, Julie. Um, so uh, what is my opinion on stonewalling? It, it's bad. <laughs> or you want to know what I think what it is? Well, think of it as like politicians as Stonewall. That basically means, you know, like bipartisan politics, meaning like they're so against each other no matter what. So here's this one's going to push this new bill through, right? Policy or something. And, and the other side's, no, nope, I don't care what it is. I'm just going to say no. We're going to do whatever we can to not pass this bill. And we don't even care how good it is. We don't even care if we want it. It's your bill. It's the other side's bill. Screw them. So it's just totally, I'm not going to work with you this is partners that sabotage each other it's amazing I, that's one thing i just don't understand about it, it, i mean i understand it i can explain it but man it is just so idiotic that narcissists have a partner and then they sabotage them imagine let's start a business go start a business with somebody and then do everything you can to ruin their life while, you, while all your investments are invested in this business with them. Worst idea you could think of. That, that's narcissist. Um, stonewalling. It, it's it, sabotage, right? I'm going to sabotage this relationship. All that matters is me, what I care about, what I want. Screw you. You know, all this is just can't communicate. Can't communicate what I want. Can't communicate what I need. Can't communicate what I'm afraid of. What I don't like. What I, just all of it. Can't communicate. I'm a stonewall. I'm a silent, silent treatment. It's abuse. Control tactics. Uh, anything else you want to know more about it, please ask, okay? Thanks. 
Lucy from the United Kingdom. Hello, Lucy. <clears throat> when a narcissist lies, do you think they know they are lying? Or have they brainwashed themselves and in denial? I've made 16 allegations against my ex in court. And he's denied every single one. I was just intrigued when he signs his statement of truth. He's aware of his BS. After following your advice for the last few years and dealing with a textbook narc, I'm in really good place and use gray rock whenever I need to. I have you to thank for that, David. Oh, thank you, Lucy. I, I, you know, we don't use gray rock much, right? Gray rock's not expressing yourself, and if you don't express yourself, there is no self. Okay? Um, when a narcissist lies, do you think they, that they know that they are lying? So this, I, 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 I hope this isn't confusing. Some do, some don't, right? Um, problem with personality disorders is awareness of what you're doing. Awareness of who they are. Okay? So they kind of know. They kind of don't. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Some do, some don't. Um, delusional, being delusional. Rewriting the narrative, right, guys? Your abuser abuses the shit out of you in, in a bad fight, a, a volatile screaming match. They say some things, threaten you, whatever. And then the next day, they rewrite, they tell you how it all went down. And it's just completely reversed. They said, you, we talked about this and that. And you're like, we did not at all. We did not talk about President Trump at all. We did, we did not even say his name. And they're like, oh, yeah, you're saying you like Trump. And I was saying I hate them. And you're saying, and you're like, no, no, we did not do this at all. And that happens. And it doesn't mean you're, you're necessarily crazy or psychotic. People do that. People are out of touch with reality and they rewrite narratives and they're delusional. They believe it. A lot of patholo pathological liars believe their lies or some rendition of it. A lot of this is protecting, trying to stay safe, not showing people who I really am. I'm so scared to be vulnerable. I can't tell the truth. I'm going to lie, lie, lie. It becomes so natural that they aren't even really aware that they're doing it sometimes. So I'm serious. So it's not black and white. Or maybe sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. And I know that's completely confusing. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you for answering my question. I think you are spot on. I haven't been healed. My question got, off, got caught off at the last part. I like to ask my question one more time. I recently, and that's great, people. People, ask your questions over and over again. If I miss it, ask it again, please. Thanks. So you recently divorced your ex-narcissist husband 12 year, for 12 years and you quickly found a new healthy relationship. <sighs> now my ex found out I'm in a new relationship. He cursed me in front of our daughter. He crazy yelling about how I cheated on him in my neighborhood. To to smear me. He completely denied how badly he had been invalidating and gaslighting me. He blames me for cheating on him and would not hold any accountability for his abusive behaviors. I'm tired of being blamed like that. I know I can't change his skewed thoughts. How could I cope with his blaming and his smear campaign? Thanks. Whoopi from Northern California. Um, you got to heal from all this stuff, okay? And you just jumped into a new relationship. I, I don't know. I'm not a fortune teller, but it's not healthy. It's not healthy. It can't be. be because you, you haven't learned what you did in all this relationship and you don't feel better about it and giving yourself what you need that you never got. The whole reason you got into it. There's just so much to it. And I'm not trying to damn your relationship. I don't know. I could be totally wrong. But you met somebody at a very low point in your life. Not good. Not good. This is bothering you so much because you're not healed from it. Not good. Not good. If we don't heal from it, we repeat it until we do. Doesn't look good, Whoopi. How do you cope with this blaming and smear campaign? You heal from the relationship so you don't care what he's saying anymore. And you don't listen to it. You don't look at it. You don't watch it, read it. And you tell the people to stop telling you. Period. Who cares what people say about you? I, you can't control it. You, I, there's people saying bad things about me and they're totally wrong. 
and it, it used to kill me. But not anymore. I don't care. I decide who I am. Oh, they don't believe me. They don't. They don't agree. They don't know who I am. And and guess what? The people that talk crap about me have no clue who I am. This guy has never cared who you are. He doesn't care how you feel. And he's telling other people things that aren't right about you. He doesn't know who you are. The people that believe it, they don't know who you are. What are you going to do? What could you do? How can you cope with lies? Don't listen. Don't look. Okay? But you got to heal from the marriage. you got to heal. And finding a, uh, uh, another man that makes you feel good is not healing. Okay? Maybe you've done all kinds of groundwork. <clears throat> I don't know. But you said you, you got right into a new relationship after your divorce, is what you said. Well, you didn't even say divorce. You said after your marriage. Um, yeah. Good luck. Uh, you want to you wanna make sure your relationship is healthy? Make sure that you meet 10 emotional needs for yourself and make sure that the relationship, that they're all met in the relationship as well. Okay? Thank you. Uh... You're the Bruce Lee of mental health. <laughs> Thanks. I left some comments, but I deleted them all, I think. Anyway, did you get to travel against Corona laws? No. No traveling. All, all, all stop. And what do you think about life and love? Uh, it's kind of general. I think that love is the fruits of life. And without it, we're just reptiles. We'd be just like a reptile, just just looking for danger. That's all that matters. And and when we're love broken and stuff and we're traumatized, that's my clients. All that matters is looking for danger, looking for danger. I think we all have a different, or our own definition of love. And I, I think that's, you know, what, what's what's a better part of life? Than love. Do you think blood is thicker than water? Um, uh, in, in chemistry, chemically, yeah, I guess. But I say it's stickier. Blood is stickier than water. Family makes you goddamn stay right there. Right there forever. You're never leaving us. You better not leave us. You better take care of us. We are family forever. I want to start a new movement called Divorce Your Parents. Divorcing your family. It's just an excuse to stay sick. Do you draw a line in the sand or let things slide? Well, drawing a line in the sand sounds like a boundary. Letting things slide sounds like your low emotional self-worth. Where's the line and why? That's up to you. It's all about how you feel. I feel comfortable here. Not here. Right there. No, not here. I feel comfortable here. That's where the line is. And it's different for you, me, or anyone else. That's why we respect people's boundaries by listening to them, getting to know them, asking them questions. Is this okay? Is that okay? We listen. Sorry if that's a silly question. No silly questions. I trust, there is no such thing. I trust your judgment because you care. Thank you. Thanks from Ireland. Thank you very much for asking. Good questions. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to stop right here. End of part one, guys. Part one. Part two starts in a few minutes. Uh, thank you. If you could, please uh, subscribe, like, love, like, hate, uh, comment, share this places. And if anybody needs help, you can find me on davidemars.com. Thank you. Love yourself first. See you in part two. Bye-bye.